This video provides a concept overview of the major topics covered in Chapter 6, Supply Chain Design. The first concept in Chapter 6 discusses global supply chains. Now, while not every organization operates directly in a global environment, virtually all organizations, and ultimately all of us, are indirectly affected by global supply chains and multinational enterprises that source, market, and produce goods and services in several countries to minimize costs, maximize profit, customer satisfaction, and social welfare. And these multinational organizations have to make numerous decisions when designing their global supply chains. Here, we can identify 11 sets or categories of questions ranging from strategy to performance measurement that can be used to guide the decision-making process. The first set of questions relates to strategy. Here, we'd ask questions like, what competitive priorities should we emphasize, and how do we build a sustainable supply chain that suppliers and customers can trust? The next category is about control. Do we centralize or decentralize control of the supply chain? Third is about location. Where do we locate research and development facilities, call centers, or warehouses and distribution centers? The fourth group revolves around sustainability. How do we champion economic, environmental, and social sustainability in global supply chains? Fifth is around technology. Do we share technological intellectual property? And if so, how do we protect it? The sixth category is about digital content. How do we build and integrate digital content and e-commerce capability into goods and services and our supply chains? The seventh category asks questions around sourcing. From whom do we purchase raw materials and parts? Next is about logistics and transportation. What transportation modes do we use? Ship? Air? How do we ensure the shipment arrives at its destination? Nine is about outsourcing. What supply chain activities do we keep in-house, and what do we outsource to outside manufacturers or contractors? The tenth category is about managing risk. How do we address supply chain risks and disruptions? Who has our money? Did the product arrive? And the last set of questions is about measuring performance. What performance metrics do we use on our supply chain? Are our suppliers' digital records trustworthy? The areas of technology and risk management, along with recent advancements in transaction security, has resulted in the creation of something called blockchain. A blockchain is a distributed database network that holds records of digital data and events in a way that makes them tamper resistant. Blockchain is for more than just Bitcoin. The goals of a blockchain enriched supply chain are to be intelligent, collaborative, transparent and secure while maximizing customer service at minimum cost. For example, De Beers uses blockchain technology to track diamonds from the point of origin to customers to ensure that the company avoids conflict diamonds and assures the customers they are buying the genuine article. The next topic focuses on five supply chain design trade-offs. The first supply chain design trade-off is about efficient versus responsive supply chains. Efficient supply chains are designed for efficiency and low cost by minimizing inventory and maximizing efficiencies and process flow. Responsive supply chains, on the other hand, focus on flexibility and responsive service and are able to react quickly to changing market demand and requirements. Walmart has an efficient supply chain, whereas Apple has a responsive supply chain. The second trade-off relates to push versus pull systems. A push system produces goods in advance of customer demand using a forecast of sales and moves them through the supply chain to the points of sale where they're stored as finished goods and inventory. Best Buy and other retail stores operate in a push system. A pull system produces only what is needed in upstream stages in the supply chain in response to customer demand signals from downstream stages. Boeing and Airbus would operate in a pull system. The third trade-off involves vertical integration versus outsourcing. Vertical integration refers to the process of acquiring and consolidating elements of a value chain to achieve more control. Integration can either be backward or forward. Backward integration refers to acquiring capabilities towards suppliers, whereas forward integration refers to acquiring capabilities towards distribution or even customers. Starbucks' acquisition of La Boulange is an example of backward integration, whereas Apple building and operating its own retail stores would be an example of forward integration. Outsourcing is the process of having suppliers provide goods and services that were previously provided internally. Companies outsourcing payroll services to ADP is a prime example of outsourcing. Other applications of outsourcing include contract manufacturing, which is where a firm that specializes in certain types of goods producing activities such as customized design or manufacturing 
or assembly or packaging works under contract for end users. Microsoft, for example, uses Foxconn as a contract manufacturer to make Xboxes. Another application of outsourcing is third-party logistics. 3PL providers, these are businesses that provide integrated services, might include packaging, warehousing and inventory management and transportation. An example here might be Ingram Micro, which has expanded beyond being a distributor to offering complete warehouse management solutions to customers. Next is the economics of outsourcing. This includes the classic make or buy decision where firms have to decide if it's more economical to produce a product themselves or to outsource. Here's where break-even analysis can be used to compare different alternatives. The last trade-off in supply chain design relates to offshoring versus reshoring. Offshoring is building, acquiring, or moving process capabilities from a domestic location to another country while maintaining ownership and control. An example of offshoring is Dell taking its customer support center to India. Reshoring is the process of moving operations back to a company's domestic location. This happened when Dell, after high levels of customer dissatisfaction with the offshore call center, brought it back to the U.S. In addition, firms need to consider both economic and non-economic reasons for offshoring. The next concept in Chapter 6 revolves around location decisions. There are numerous factors that need to be considered when making location decisions, such as location-specific factors, transportation, utilities, climate, community, and environment, and state, political, and legal considerations. The location decision itself is hierarchical, starting at the global level and working down to the site level. At the global level, we ask which country should we go? Important considerations here might include time zones, foreign language, customs, tariffs, and other trade restrictions. After deciding on which country, the regional decision is next. If the U.S. is where we'll go, which state? Considerations here might include labor availability and costs, the degree of unionization, land, construction, and utility costs. Next, once we know the region, we move down to the community level. If the state of Alabama was selected in the regional decision, then which city in Alabama? Considerations here might include community services, taxes and tax incentives, available transportation systems. Finally, we drill down to the exact site location within that city. Here we consider site costs, proximity to transportation systems, utilities, sustainability issues, and zoning restrictions. A useful tool in determining where to locate within a region or community is the center of gravity method, which helps suggest the optimal location to customers by factoring the relative demand of customers. The center of gravity method uses a grid overlay to identify the optimal X and Y coordinates. Here's an illustration. Conceptually, looking at the exact center of where all your customers are located might seem like the best solution. In this example here, grid point 8080 is dead center. However, some customers are larger than others and may require more frequent deliveries than smaller ones. Factoring in customer demand might result in grid point X76Y100 to be better. Of course, we have to consider roads, waterways, zoning, and other items that might affect the exact final location, but this gives a good guide. The last concept in the chapter relates to supply chain optimization, which is the process of ensuring that a supply chain operates at the highest levels of efficiency and effectiveness. This involves minimizing costs of manufacturing and transportation, which might include sourcing, distribution, and placement of inventory throughout the chain. A common tool used for supply chain optimization is the transportation model, which is essentially a form of linear programming. The transportation model is a linear optimization model that seeks to minimize the cost of shipping from sources such as factories to destinations such as warehouses or customer zones. We often take for granted that we can go to a store and buy pretty much anything we want. Milk, bananas, computers or cars, they're just there. But they don't just magically appear in the store. They go through complex sets of global supply chains that are carefully designed and constantly monitored for cost, efficiency and effectiveness.